welcome. Uh, good to see you again. And uh, hope you're doing well. Hope your mo morning's going wonderfully. And um, I, I hope that that you, as you are engaging and and um, opening your Bibles on a daily basis, that you're experiencing great joy and um, and hope. I uh, we're we're going to be in Psalm uh, 13 today, and and David does this amazing job of contrasting the despair and, and the frustration of life, and then and then going back to truth and, and describing. Um, what he knows God to be, even though it's, it's, he's wrestling with, uh, the, with the experience and, and feeling defeated and, and discouraged. So, um, anyway, it'll be a great day. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to the beautiful weather. So, um, I, I want to thank, uh, Randy, thank you for the coffee. Uh, we're actually doing the, I think, I think it was Don Francisco's vanilla coffee um that that he sent me he heard me uh mentioning my coffee dilemmas yesterday not dilemmas it's not actually true not a dilemma at all um it's it is uh it's one that i like so i chose it but he sent me their favorite and uh i have to say randy it's very very good i like it as well so thank you for the coffee selection um and i really appreciate it it is very very good so thank you very much good morning Kay. You are right. God is good. It's good to see you guys. Hey, I put something on the on our Facebook as we introduced uh, the the title this morning. I don't know if you guys are up for this, but if you're willing to, um, if you have a your iPhone handy or Facebook on there, if you're on your computer and and you know how to take a take a screenshot and send it to me, um, I would love for you to add a, just a, a picture of your smile this morning. Um, I think you can go down there in the comment section uh, and and um, there, there might be a spot where you can add a picture or do something along that line. So um, if somebody knows how to do that, would you be, would you do that for me this morning? I would love to see some smiling faces and just, just to see you guys in person. Uh, that's probably the weirdest part of all this is that um, I only get to see a couple of people every week um, and you see me, but I don't get to see you. And um, I really miss uh, saying good morning and, and um, seeing your smiles and, and actually um, giving many of you our um, the traditional morning hugs that we have on Sunday morning when we see one another. So uh, cannot wait to the day that we are celebrating and, and, and gathering together again and getting to exercise the gift that we call church and the body life of of our little church in Liberty Lake Church. And um, I'm going to brag about us just a little bit because it's one of the things that is such a joy for me, uh, for Sally and I, as we have uh, become part of this family and experience uh, the phenomenal joy, just the life of, of our little church on a Sunday morning when we fill up the foyer and there's hardly any room for anybody to move around in there and you can't hardly hear anybody because it's so loud and it's just wonderful and um, look forward specifically uh, to greeting you and and to hugging you and to saying hello and to hearing what God has been doing. So um, I, the anticipation is building for me for us to be back together and I can't wait to have that time. Good morning, Amanda. Good to see you guys. Darlene, uh, good to see you on here. Um, I, I apologize, Darlene. I don't know if we've met or not, but I sure look forward to the opportunity to to see you and, and to say hello one of these mornings. So Pam, good to see you. Um, and like I said, if you guys would do me a favor, if you have any way of sending a picture, saying good morning and, and posting a picture online, um, I would just be incredibly grateful. I don't know if we can even do that. I'm looking on here and I see a bunch of weird stuff. I don't, I don't really see an option opportunity to send you a photo. So maybe we can't do that. And, and we can do that later um, afterwards um, from, from your Facebook page. So good morning, Holly. Good to see you. Um, I, I am doing really well. I hope, I hope you guys are well. Good, good morning, Julie. Um, I, I hope you're well and, and know that our staff at Liberty Lake Church are, um, we, we just miss y'all. And we reference it when the, when the skeleton crew shows up to do our live feed, we, we all reference how much we miss the family, how much we miss gathering with you all um, and, and our anticipation of doing that again at, at some point soon, Lord willing. And that's really what we're praying for is that it's going to, um, going to be soon. Oh, Darlene. Okay. You're Amanda's mom. Awesome. Well, it is good to have you on, on here. Good to, uh, good to see you. 
and uh, thanks for joining. My mom actually checks in normally. You'll see her at some point check in to hear my mom and dad do as well. So good morning, Leslie. Good to see you guys. Um, what a goofy thing it is, right? That we're doing this on a weekly basis, on a, oh, it's a daily basis. We're doing this every morning and we're checking in. Um, I want to encourage you. I, uh, this is something pretty, it's unique for me. It's different. I, I'm used to spending all week working on a sermon and, and being in a text and wrestling with multiple texts and, and, you know, building an idea and a, and something to share on a weekly basis. Um, but doing this every morning has been really, really good. It's been, um, a little bit more work than I realized, uh, as far as just being ready every morning. And, um, I, I've, I've been really spending a, a bit more time in prayer every morning, asking the Lord, God, what do you, what would you have for, for us as your body today? What would you have for us to be encouraged and, and for us to look at in the text? Help me to see what you're trying to teach me for one. Um, and then help me to see what, what we as the body need to see, um, and, and to think through. Good, good morning, Cindy. Thanks for joining me. Us, not me, it's us. It's just weird. I feel like it's me because I'm sitting here talking and and um, I hear myself talking the whole time. It's the weirdest thing ever. So, um, I, uh, so I, I've been doing that and I want to encourage you guys, if you haven't, if you haven't done this, do this for a week. Just take, let's just take Psalms. Take take a book of the Bible and and sit down and and read through it, asking God to give you something to share with someone else for a week, and then and then you know if you have a loved one or somebody in your family that you can actually sit down and open the text and talk through what it means to you, what God's teaching you. Um, I would encourage you to do that because it is it is a powerful powerful thing that God does in our hearts. Um, as we wrestle with this text and then as we try and share it with other people, it's been one of the great blessings for me. I feel like I am growing um, more than I even realized that I could in this time. And I'm, be, I'm really being challenged by God by, in his word and, and through how I'm looking at life, how I'm dealing with this situation, how I see my neighbors, all of those things. Darlene, you're in California, so there is a really good chance that we're not going to be able to see you and, and welcome you in. Um in, in in a real physical way so welcome and and know that you are um that we're glad you're here and and you'd probably get a hug if you showed up on a sunday so bill and sue good to see you guys um that's all right if there's no pictures i'm just i'm i'm just asking for those of you that have that ability to to throw us up a picture um if you can because it would be great to see your smiling faces so if you can't that's awesome i get it um and uh, I, I'm just I'm just glad to have you guys here. So let's jump into Psalms, Psalms chapter 13 this morning. Um, you know, it's interesting when we start dealing with David, you're going to see a very the 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 melody, the 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 rhythm of the psalm is very very similar, and you're going to see some similarities, and we're going to wrestle with that. And I think. Um, Anyway, the Lord just really challenged me again this morning as as I was working through this text, trying to be ready uh, to meet with you guys. Good morning, Kathleen. Good to see you guys. Um, oh, I don't get to see you. Ah, that's the frustration, right? We're not we're not actually seeing one another. <laughs> You're watching me. So, uh, man, I am I am overwhelmed with my gratitude for our freedom to gather, and um, really looking forward to restoring that this morning. Psalm thirteen. It is. Uh, it starts off in verse 1. I know that's a surprise, but that's, that's where we're going to begin. Psalm 13, verse 1. How long, O Lord, will you forget me? Uh, excuse me. Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lift up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Light up my eyes. Uh, sorry, I'm rereading that. that. That just did you catch that? Listen, to, listen to this. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I'm shaken. Verse 5, but I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountiful with me. Good morning, Kathleen uh, Peterson. Good morning, Candy Hill. Good to see you guys. Um, did, did you? 
I don't know if you ca- caught that in that in that psalm, but one of the the very first thing is you begin to read that psalm. It's it's amazing the despair that you hear in the wording, right? I mean, it 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 it's very uh, seems like he's pretty discouraged, pretty frustrated, pretty pretty exhausted with life. He says, "How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me?" Th- that's a despair cry. That's like, God, are you even there? What are you doing? How how long do I have to put up with this? And I'm going to be honest with you, when I look at this stuff and I look at our current situations, even today right now with with the the passionate pursuit of of sin and and, and evil in our in our world, um, the 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 passion, the, the the frustration of being separated and the struggles that we're facing. I mean, I'm engaged with different people who are talking about everything from the conspiracy side of things to the to, you know, to the spiritual side of things and, and everything in between. There's just, there's such a wide gamut of thought and people's perspectives on what's happening and what, how this is going to affect the church. You know, is this the end times? Is this the beginning of the end? Um, which yes, as we've talked about, it is because the moment God put a clock in it and said the earth and the stars and all that sets the time frame. it started the beginning of the end and we're working our way there. But is it now? And, and that's really the question that we're wrestling with. And, and the, the, the challenges that that can lead us to despair of oftentimes. And, and David's there. And when you look at his life, when you look at what he's gone through, his father-in-law who, who turns against him and then pursues him to try and kill him for, for nearly 10 years of his life, he's running for his life, um, being never sure who he can trust and who's going to turn him in. Um, people that he knows and that are taking care of him. Saul has killed the, the priest that David went in and and, and actually lied to um, about what he was doing. And the priest and his whole family gets taken in before Saul and killed. All of those things are happening around David. And can you imagine the kind of despair? I mean, I can't hardly even imagine what that would be like. I, I see what I'm in. I see the struggles that, that we face. And I find myself going, oh, what was me? And, and yet it's not nearly as significant as what we see you know, King David and the people of Israel dealing with at times and, and the disciples in the New Testament and what they dealt with and then what Jesus dealt with in, in b- taking false accusation and dying for our sins because of his obedience to his father. And so we see David crying out to the Lord and, and uh, there's times where um, that's how I feel even about today, even about this time. I'm like, Lord, how much longer? Uh, you know, I mean, this sounds petty, but I miss you guys. I miss, I miss some of the simplicity of our, of our, of our church experience that I've grown up with that I'm used to. And what will it be like when we come back? I mean, will it be the same? Will we, will we as the church just go back to our normal day lives where, where we're complacent about our, uh, the freedom of gathering, where we're complacent about the beauty and the privilege of of fellowship with one another, where we get get back to the bitterness and the backbiting and some of the goofy stuff. <coughs> ah, excuse me. I apologize, you guys. My sinuses are killing me, and it's got to be allergies. I'm guessing. I don't know what else what else it could be at this point because <clears throat> I feel wonderful. Um, but the challenge that what I'm wrestling with is: Are we going to go back to being the same church that we were before this? Not having not having been refined, not having been um, been grown and matured, and and having our focus adjusted. And that's one of my concerns as we think about this. And and as we go through the psalm, the thing that I love that David does, and this is where I was really challenged today. He he puts before God the the struggles of his heart, what he's really feeling. And he, and he expresses that in a very honest way. I mean, at one point, even saying, uh, you know, verse three, consider and answer me, O Lord, my God, light up my eyes, lest I die, lest I sleep the sleep of death. God, speak to me. Tell me what you're doing. Sh- show up. Respond now. I, I need to hear from you. And then I, I love how he ends it, how he how he turns the whole the whole perspective of of his cry, of his desperation, of his concern. He turns that whole thing around, and he references a couple of things. And we're going to look at those pieces real quick. In verse five, he says, "But I have trusted in your steadfast love; my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because He has dealt bountiful with me." First thing he says is that I have trusted in your steadfast love. I don't know how many of you guys have noticed, but in our movies, 
which I don't know if you watch a lot of movies or not. I, I tend to watch, I like the, I like the comedy action, you know, ones where, where it's, where it's kind of run and gun and, and, and there's a little bit of romance in there. And, um, and you know, the, so you got the hero who, who's going to do something crazy and the person that's supposed to trust them. And there's this, there's this relationship that's built very, very quickly. It's, it's like, you know, almost immediately. And, and then you'll, you'll be in a scene where, where the, to, to save themselves, they have to do something crazy that the one person is like, I've got this. I know what the answer is. And the other person's scared to death. And, and that hero, that hero will turn to this person that's terrified of what's going to happen and say, do you trust me? And we're supposed to believe that based on this relationship that started to build this, this, this dependency, um, that, that, almost it, it almost like measures or, or it's a it's an evaluation of their love and and whether or not they're going to trust this person to risk their life to let them save them and and we watch that and i watch those in the movies and i'm like oh, i wouldn't trust that guy i wouldn't trust him i don't there's no there's no history built there's no relationship there's no there's no um experience of faithfulness in that environment and yet when it comes to god when it comes to whether or not we're going to trust God, we have the history. The Bible actually shows us a historical account um, that you can go back and 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 again from the historical records, the the manuscripts that we that they found that that go back thousands of years that support what we have today, and and they've been able to tie all that stuff together. There's there's physical historical evidence for the accuracy of Scripture. And so you can see how it's lined out, how it's been recorded, and 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 the faithfulness of those who have recorded that. So we, we have the physical evidence, and and I love that even in the text it says that you know while we were still weak, while we were sent sinners, while we were enemies of God, Jesus died for us. Before we moved for Him, He died. He He gave His life up in advance. So when we think about trusting in the steadfast love of God, like David speaks of here, we can look at the fact that he already gave up his life. He, he already did the greatest act of, of, exor- of showing love, of um, showing trustworthiness, is that he gave his life. He made the first step and he did it completely. And so when David says that I trusted in your steadfast love, He's doing that from a from a position of relationship with God that's been built over that time that he's watched him care for him. And so in the midst of his despair, he's going back to who he knows God to be, even though he's not feeling that right now, even though in his in his experience, he's saying, ah, where are you? Why aren't you here? I, I don't feel like you're involved in this. And yet he goes back to who he knows God to be and says, but I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I, I, I was wrestling with this idea of rejoicing in your salvation. Hey, good morning, mom. Good to see you. Um, when was the last time that we rejoiced in the salvation of God? When was the last time that we really rejoiced in what God was doing? I, I see this happen in the church, um, I think, way too often where something happens in in a political arena or in an athletic arena or in a personal victory in a job setting or something like that where there's a physical blessing there's a physical uh completion of something there's something that has happened that we celebrate and and we'll clap and we'll cheer and we'll make a lot of noise and depending on how much we like it how much we value it we can really get exuberant i mean when when the seahawks won the super bowl um, uh, man, I made lots of noise. I made, I made lots of noise. I, I was, I was pretty hyped up when, when the trailblazers, my, one of the sports teams that I like to follow when, when they won the, the, when they went to play, they actually won, uh, in the playoffs. Um, I think it was last year and, uh, they, they won one of the, a great rivalry, a huge game. And, and they went out, you know, it, it, they ended up losing the, the next series that would have gotten them the, the, you know, not the championship, but it would have gotten them their division championship. Man, we were making all kinds of noise in my house, jumping up and down, shouting and hoop. I mean, it was it was obnoxious, loud celebration with my boys and I. Good morning, Randy. Good morning, Joan. Good to see you guys. Do we do that when we think about the salvation of God? 
I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't rejoice like that. I mean, there may be moments, but I don't really rejoice with that kind of passion, with that kind of, of overt celebration and joy. I, I, I do with certain things. That's the problem. If I never did it ever, it wouldn't bother me. But the fact that I do it for certain things like sporting events or, or um, you know, the excitement that I have because uh, uh, I, I got a performance part coming for my Mustang, um, you know, something that we that, you know, I've been trying to save up money for and and um, Sally and I have, have, have figured out the budget side and, and we said, OK, this this little percentage you can put away and, and you can use on your car when when you get enough money. And we got there. And so I bought my part and I'm super excited about it. Ha! But am I excited? Do I rejoice in the salvation of the Lord that my eternal destiny is secure because of who Jesus is? I, I think we need to wrestle with this. And then he closes off this passage with verse six. It's crazy. It says, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountiful with me. Now, you take that verse right there and you go back to verse one. What does it say? How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? Does that sound like bountiful? Does that sound like he's dealt bountiful with him? When we think about this, uh, there's a part of me that could go, man, David, you're kind of nuts. Like one minute you're saying God's not doing the stuff you want him to. He, you know, how long I'm going to be, I'm, uh, my soul is, is, is in anguish. My heart um, is in sorrow all day long. You know, will you forget me forever? I mean, he's, he's expressing deep, deep uh, uh, anguish and, and, and despair. In, it was how I would see the first part of 13. But at the end, he goes back and he, he he's clearly reminding himself of the bountiful, wonderful things that God has done. How important is it, brothers and sisters, that we open our eyes, that we look and see what God has done, the beautiful things, the amazing things, the, the small things in, in the blessings that he's given us. You know, one of the great blessings we've talked, I talked about it earlier this morning um, as we got started. One of the great blessings is our little, the family life that God has given us at Liberty Lake Church. The amazing relational connections that are growing there. The 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 joyful celebration of of people meeting and the the noise that comes out of the foyers. People are gathering and and glad to be together. And the fact that there are people that are sometimes there for, for 45 minutes after the service, enjoying each other's fellowship and company. And then there's groups that go and have lunch together after church. It, it's phenomenal how much people are enjoying their presence and, and their gathering together. Have we thanked God for those kind of blessings recently? Have we thanked God for... Um, this is going to sound really weird, you guys, and and don't don't get me wrong, but sometimes I need to be reminded of, of the real blessings that God has for us. I haven't thanked Him for vegetables recently, just being honest, not not on the top of my list. Um, I guess I could. Oh, I just thought about this. I've got green jelly beans upstairs. I could celebrate. Okay, that might be a stretch. So may, maybe I can't do that. But have I been have I really been grateful for the for the the produce that God has put in my life for the food for the provisions that he's given us the the fact that my bride is concerned about my health and so she's trying to get me to eat more vegetables because most people know that it's a good idea Am I grateful for that Have I have I thanked God for that recently you know, when we start looking at our lives, when we start seeing the the heaviness, the weight, the challenges, and, and some of you are facing deep, painful, hard things. Everything from family conflict to physical health issues. Maybe even doubting and, and, and wrestling with your own faith, whether or not God's really real. Is, is, he, is he really real? Or, or is he really capable of dealing with my sin, dealing with my junk? Could he really love me because of the way I am? All of those things, all of that stuff is real. 
and it's heavy and, 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 it, and, it, and it, it weighs on us. But the truth of the word of God, the reality of who he is, is capable of handling those things. And that's the thing I love about what David does in this psalm. David is clearly in a point of despair and he's crying out to the Lord because he's worn out. He's exhausted. He's tired of all. He's tired of his enemies. He's tired of the of the battle. He's tired of the life process. He's, he's tired of the opportunities for growth that he's experiencing in his life. And in the midst of that frustration, in the midst of that crying out to the Lord, he remembers and he goes back and he, I think he chooses to remember. He chooses to look back and say, but God, you are this, this is who you are. And this is what I know you to be. And this is how you've met me in the past. And because of that, I'm going to celebrate who you are. I'm going to, I'm going to rejoice in what you've done because your character is secure. Your character is true. Your nature is unchanging. And so although my life right now may not be the way I wanted, it may not be comfortable, it may not be everything I, I was hoping it would be, I can trust that you're doing what's best for me for eternity's purposes. You're doing what's best for me your, for your kingdom purposes. And in that, I can rejoice. In that, I can extol your praises. In that, I can sing to the Lord because you have dealt bountifully with me. Have we seen God that way this week? If not, I want to encourage you. He is doing that. We need to open our eyes and look. We need to see him for who he is. If you're struggling, and if you're, if you're stuck in verses one through four right now in despair and frustration and discouragement, I want to encourage you to open your Bibles and to, to treat that moment, to treat those thoughts with the truth of God's word. Who is God? What is he like? And to cry out to him. Be like David. Be honest. God, this stinks. I'm tired. I'm done. I need you to show up. Please answer me. Talk to me. Show me in your word what it is you're doing. Help me to see it. But be sure to return to result uh, to rejoicing in who he is. Not because he needs to hear it, but because you and I need to hear this. We need to be reminded of who God is. That he's faithful. That he's good. That he's sovereign. Holy, righteous all-knowing, all-powerful, magnificent. Those are the things that we need to that we need to celebrate about who God is. Those are the things that, that we need to end our conversations with so that it redirects our hearts and it encourages our souls to consider that and, and, and to put our hope in that, to put our to put our eyes on that so it redirects us back to him. There's nothing in this world that will ever that will ever fully satisfy us. The church, as glorious as it is, as big as God's plan is, the church will fail you and it'll fail me from time to time because we're humans. I will fail you. I will, I will, I will miss a call. I'll, I'll say something wrong. I'll, I'll be tired and worn out and, and, and not care at some point when I should have. Those things are the realities of life because I'm human. You're human. We're going to fail one another. But the glorious truth is that that's not God. That's not God. And it's not Jesus. And when we put our hope and our trust in him, when we engage in that relationship with him, when we remind ourselves of who he is, then we have peace. Then we have joy. Then we can rejoice and we can celebrate. We can sing praises and we can declare, God, you have dealt with me bountifully. So you get the glory, you get the praise, and I will worship you with all that I am and all that I have for all the days of my life. May God be glorified in the worship of his church this week. As you can't do it in the church, you have to do it as the church, in your homes, in your communities, in your neighborhoods, in your work, if you have the privilege of working right now. May God be, may God be glorified as he blesses you with with his relationship today, with his provision today, with his peace today, as you consider who he is. Turn our eyes upon Jesus, right? Get our eyes there and let him overwhelm us with the truth of who he is. Man, I love you guys. I miss you all. 
and really look forward to seeing most of you face to face. Uh, what a what a what a wonderful um, what a wonderful joy it is going to be for us to celebrate together the glories and, and wonderful works of Jesus as we regather. Hopefully, very very soon. Have a great morning, and I will talk to you later. Bye.